All right, so here I'm going to go over um, the in-depth solution to a few of the problems from uh, the review problem set. All right, here are the answers once again, and now I'm going to go in-depth on a few and show you how you might get uh, those particular answers. Let's take a look. All right, we'll start with number four from page 419. Here we have a region R that is bounded by the graphs of y equals square root of x, y equals e to the negative x, and the y-axis. So here is square root of x, here is e to the negative x, and here is the y-axis, so there's my region R. And the first thing I obviously want to do is sketch that out, and I am pretty sure uh, that I'm going to want to find um, this intersection point. And when I read that question A says find the area of R, I know that I'm going to need to know where they intersect here. So I find that point, and that is the point 0 0.426. Now to make my work a little easier, I'm going to define uh, a variable. I'm going to say that a is equal to 0 0.426. And uh, that way when I'm writing my integrals, I can use a instead of 0 0.426. And that way people will still know what I'm, I'm referring to, but it will be easier to write out and be less messy. In part A, I'm finding the area of the region R, and I can draw a little approximating rectangle to help myself visualize the heights of these rectangles. Of course, the width is simply going to be dx, and the heights are going to be the vertical distance between uh, the curve e to the negative x and uh, the curve square root of x. So I can write my integral uh, going from 0, I'm going to be summing from 0 to 0 0.426, uh, the heights times the widths. So there is my definite integral, and then when I compute this, since I have a calculator here, I can compute on the calculator, and it will be 0 0.162 square units. All right, in part B, I'm going to revolve the region R about the line y equals negative 1. It's going to form a three-dimensional solid, and I want to find the volume of that solid. First thing I want to do is visualize this. I could redraw it, but um, by this point, I should have a pretty clear idea of what it will look like. I can see the gap between the region and my uh, line around which I'm revolving, which will cause a hollow uh, in the inside of my solid. And that means that each slice or cross section is going to have a, a circular part cut out from uh, the center. It's going to be washer shaped. So the part that's going to be cut out is the circular cross section formed um, by the, the curve square root of x, and then the uh, cross section formed by e to the negative x will be the outer shell, and the, the part in between the two is what I'm going to be looking for. So I'm going to draw one cross section, I will pull it out so I can visualize it flat, um, but then I'll just go straight into finding the uh, dimensions and the function for the area. So there is my cross section. The area uh, inside the little green circle is the hollow part, and therefore the area I'm trying to find is the uh, washer in between. So the um, radius for the inner portion is just the vertical distance between the curve square root of x and the line y equals negative 1. The one above is square root of x, the one below is negative 1, so it would be square root of x minus negative 1. And that, of course, is square root of x plus 1. Then for the larger radius, that's going to be the vertical distance between the curve e to the negative x and the line y equals negative 1. And so therefore, it is going to be e to the negative x minus negative 1, or e to the negative x plus 1. So now I can find uh, the area that I seek by subtracting the area of the smaller circle from the area of the bigger circle. And I can combine that with the simple fact that the thickness of each cross section is dx, and therefore I can add up all of the infinitesimally small volumes of the cross sections uh, using definite integration. So I'll go ahead and write out the area function as well as the integral I would use. And here those are, and evaluating this integral in my calculator gives me 1.631 units cubed. Something to note here, because I've written a of x out so clean and neatly, when I rewrite my statement for volume as the definite integral from 0 to a of a of x, d of x, uh, dx, 
it is very clear what a of x is. And so no one will have any question as to what I'm computing and that I understand uh, what I am doing. Had I not written this out neatly, I would have had to make sure that I am writing out my integral with the area function actually input here. And I would want to factor out the pi. So it would be pi times the definite integral from 0 to a of this statement here, dx, and then equals my answer. All right, part C is pretty simple here. I've got a, another solid. This time it's being created by taking semicircles whose diameters are the distance between the two curves. And um, those are going to be the cross sections of my solid. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a cross section. I want to make sure I label the dimension. And uh, then I'm going to use the definite integral uh, to calculate that volume. So here is that semicircle right here. I need the radius of it. I know the diameter is the distance between the two curves, so the radius will be half that distance, or in other words, e to the negative x minus square root of x over 2. And I've written that right here, and now I'm going to use the area of a semicircle, 1 half pi r squared, uh, to write a function for the area of my cross sections, and then I will integrate. And I have done that here. Notice that I have simplified a little bit. I can square both numerator and denominator. That'll give me a uh, denominator of 4. And then I can factor that out. And 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth. So it'll be pi over 8 times e to the negative x minus square root of x squared. And thus the volume is going to be uh, adding up all of those uh, areas times the infinitesimally small thickness uh, from 0 to a. And that gives me 0 uh, point zero three five units cubed. All right, one thing I want to note is that um, using a calculator made the integration process actually really easy. Um, but if you look back at part A here, uh, if the upper limit hadn't been something so obscure as 0 0.426, uh, you know, and it was something more manageable, you can find the antiderivative of this function pretty easily. And so it'd be worthwhile actually doing that. And th that way, if you had to on a non-calculator portion, uh, you could evaluate this integral by hand. And that would be a very, very worthwhile skill uh, to practice. All right, here we are with uh, number 53 on page 441. I'm looking at a region R that is the area in the first quad uh, quadrant that is enclosed by the y-axis the curve y equals 2 plus sine of x, that's the blue curve, and the curve y equals secant x, which is uh, the red curve here. So they intersect uh, for the first time in the first quadrant at 1.223, and so this is going to be the region R that is described. First thing I want to do is find the area uh, of this region R. I'll label that here. All right, so to find the area, I want to think about the heights of these approximating rectangles. And when I combine them, or multiply them, I should say, with the widths uh, dx, I will have these infinitesimally small areas. And I can add them all the way through uh, from 0 to 1.223. Clearly here, the height is the vertical distance between uh, the curve 2 plus sine x and secant x. And since 2 plus sine x is, is above, um, secant x, it will be 2 plus sine x minus secant x. And now I can use the definite integral to find this area. And there I have done this. Notice I have uh, made A, capital A, uh, the x coordinate at which the two curves intersect, so the end of my interval. And therefore I can write the integral from 0 to A of my height times my width, and that's going to give me 1.366 units squared. All right, in part B, we're going to take this region R and we're going to revolve it about the x-axis. And since you can see there is space between the region and the axis of revolution, we know we're going to have a hollow inside of our solid. And so we're going to have washer-shaped cross-sections. We want to draw one of these washer-shaped cross-sections, find both uh, of the radii, uh, and then we can write our area function and integrate. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that cross-section now. Here is my cross-section. It's washer-shaped. Uh, I want to find the radius of the smaller circle and the bigger uh, circular cross-section. The radius for the bigger circle here is the vertical distance between the curve 2 plus sine x and the x-axis. And so that's just going to be 2 plus sine x minus 0, since this has a y value of 0 always. And very similarly, uh, for the smaller 
uh, circle, the radius is simply the vertical distance between secant x and the x-axis. Uh, so that's the difference in the y-coordinates, and that'll be secant x minus 0. And therefore, I can write uh, my area function pretty simply, as I have done right here. And uh, noticing, of course, that the thickness of my cross-sections is dx, I can find the infinitesimally small volume and add them all up from 0 to 1.223 using the definite integral, and that will give me the volume. And doing so uh, allows me to compute, using my calculator, a volume of 16.404 units cubed. All right, in part C, uh, we have a, another solid. This one is created by taking squares and making squares the cross-sections all the way through the region. So I can draw one of my cross-sections. Done that here. And it's a square, so I need the side length in order to find the area of the cross-section. And I notice here that the side length is simply going to be the vertical distance between uh, the two curves. I already know uh, how to find that. I did that in part A. And so that tells me that the side length here is going to be 2 plus sine x minus secant x. And this allows me to write my area function quite easily since uh, the area of a square is just the side length squared. And now, combining the area with the thickness of each cross-section dx, I can find the volume of each cross-section and add those up through my entire interval infinitely many times using the definite integral to calculate my volume. And when I do so, I will get 1.629 units cubed for my volume.